In this lesson, we will talk about Euclidean and Manhattan distances between two data points. In the previous lesson, we discussed four axioms that every distance formula must satisfy. Those four axioms are sometimes referred to as metric properties or distance properties. Euclidean and Manhattan distances satisfy all those metric properties. Hi, I am Dr. Shahriyar Hussain. Let us start with the Euclidean distance between two data points. You are probably already familiar with Euclidean distance from geometry. You know that the distance between two points A and B where A is x1, y1 and B is x2, y2 is equal to square root of x1 minus x2 square plus y1 minus y2 square. The distance between two rows of a data table can be computed using the same Euclidean distance formula because tabular data forms a Euclidean space. For example, consider row 2 and row 5 of this table. Row 2 has 5 and 4 as its two features and row 5 has 9 and 2. Therefore, the distance between row 2 and row 5 is equal to square root of 5 minus 9 square plus 4 minus 2 square. The result becomes 4.4721. What happens when we have a three-dimensional data set like this one? The principle of Euclidean distance is the same for a higher dimensional space. The square root of the summation of squared differences in each dimension. That is, for a three-dimensional data set R space, the distance between two data points A, which is x1, y1, z1, and B, which is x2, y2, z2, is equal to square root of x1 minus x2 square plus y1 minus y2 square plus z1 minus z2 square. Row 2 of this three-dimensional data table contains 5, 4, and 5. Row 5 contains 9, 2, and 1. The Euclidean distance between row 2 and row 5 of this table is square root of 5 minus 9 square plus 4 minus 2 square plus 5 minus 1 square, which results in 6. Let us discuss Euclidean distance for even higher dimensional tables. Let us say n dimensional data. That is, the data has n features. Here is the general formula to compute the Euclidean distance between two data points or vectors. Let's say point A has these features f1, f2, f3, f4 up to f of n. And point B has all these n features g1, g2, g3, g4 up to gn. That means it's an n-dimensional data set. The Euclidean distance between a and b will be square root of f1 minus g1 square plus f2 minus g2 square plus f3 minus g3 square so and so forth up to fn minus gn square. That is, in every dimension, take the square of the distance in that dimension into vectors. 
sum up all the squares and then take an overall square root. This formula to compute the distance between two points or two vectors is sometimes written with two double bars at left and right. The double bars generally indicate an L2 norm of the vector inside the bars. That means the Euclidean distance of two vectors is the L2 norm of the difference between two vectors. The general formula looks like this one. The summary is to compute the Euclidean distance between two vectors, take the square of the difference in every dimension in two vectors, then sum up all these squares, and then take an overall square root. Now, let us talk about Manhattan distance. Given that you are already familiar with Euclidean distance, Manhattan distance is not difficult to master. A simpler difference in every dimension can be computed without squaring the differences and without using the square root. That is, just sum up the differences between the two vectors in every dimension. Manhattan distance between A and B is equal to this general formula. That is, we are taking absolute difference in every dimensions and then we are summing up all those absolute differences to compute Manhattan distance. Manhattan distance is sometimes denoted using a lone bar at the left and right of the difference of the vectors. The right bar has a subscript of 1 indicating that it is L1 norm. That is, we are taking absolute difference in every dimension and then we are summing up all the absolute differences to compute Manhattan distance. As an example, let us assume that we have a four-dimensional dataset. Two vectors in this dataset are A equals 5, 4, 9, 2, and B equals 4, 9, 2, 7. Therefore, the Manhattan distance between A and B would be the absolute difference between 5 and 4 plus the absolute difference between 4 and 9 plus the absolute difference between 9 and 2 plus the absolute difference between 2 and 7, which results in 18. Practically, you can compute distance between every pair of rows of a dataset. As is stated earlier in this video, both Euclidean distance and Manhattan distance satisfy the metric properties or the distance properties. That means we can call them distance. Now let us talk about an exercise. You have this table which has five features. What are the Euclidean distance and Manhattan distance between row 2 and row 5 of this table? Please do this exercise whenever you can manage some time after watching this video entirely. Please write your answer in the comments section below. I will provide feedback on your answer. We will discuss a few more distance and similarity measures in the upcoming lessons. Also, please do not forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell-shaped button to receive notifications when we publish any new video. I'll see you next time.